Hey guys, and welcome to Photoshop. So today we're working with an index color for screen printing. Um, in the past we've talked about halftone. That is a different process where you're printing for specific colors, whereas with indexing color we're going to be telling Photoshop exactly which color we're going to be printing. As far as looking at the file, we're going to be looking at dots that are all the same size, and the image will be created out of the density of those dots, versus with CMYK halftone we're controlling the size of the dots. This is an image I took in Maui on a hike. So we're gonna first we're gonna start out with the um, image size. This is really critical here, and I'm gonna make this ten by seven and a half. That seems really good. Think of that. Depending on the size that you end up printing your image, actually I want to make it a little bigger than that. I'm gonna make it nine by twelve. Um, this the size that you print controls how much information you can get. So. Um, Given the limitations of the screen, if you have an image with a lot of complexity, printing it a little bit bigger is going to give you more satisfaction. Now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to lower the resolution. This is something that you get never you never are told to lose lower the resolution. So this is uh, might feel a little bit strange. And the reason for this is that we need the dots to be big enough to shoot onto our screen. If we do a fine a dot that's too small, it might look really good on the computer, but then when we go to shoot that onto the screen, we're going to be really disappointed when the dots don't shoot. So um, just for people who are tuning in, we are working with 230 mesh. So 120 is about double the size of our mesh. And this is a size that I know will work reliably in our screen. Some printmakers would tell you that you can go a little bit finer than this, um, but I really want to set you up for success. If you're working with a uh, even a 300 mesh screen, you could definitely play around with these numbers. Um, and if you do, let me know what your results are, because I really do want to know how this is working, because I'm sure that the emulsion and the mesh count are all variables here. But let's the conversation for another day. So I'm going to go ahead and apply that image size. And it's a really good idea at this point to actually save your file, because um, if you don't like with half to with sorry with indexing colors you're going to be trying a lot of things and you may not like the first round of results that you get and so if you go back to original file often people will forget that this isn't the file that they changed the resolution on so i'm going to go ahead and file save as to make a copy of the file that i'm working on i'll call this um hillside uh, 120 so i know that it's been resolution has been changed and this means that if I need to go back to a starting point, this is the place where I want to be if I want to make changes to the index. Um, and I don't have to remember how big I was planning to make it, all that good stuff. So do save copies of your files as you go, and then you won't be um, crying later. So next up, let's go into index color. First, let's, let's think about the number of colors that we want to pick. So I'm going to open up the swatches palette here. We want to think about uh, I'm going to go in with the eyedropper tool, and we really want to think about what are the important colors on this composition. So to start out with, this ocean blue color is really important. I like to start my color selection with a color that I can find really easily. So I'm going to start out with white, and then I'm going to go in for this, this ocean blue. Definitely need that color. This Purple is fairly important to me, these little purple flowers. Uh, this green, bright green, as well as the medium green, as well as, a th I think a third green is actually important here, because there are three very different greens, and there's a lot of texture in this. And then I want a dark so let's see how many colors we have here. One, two, three, four, five colors. I'll save the dark for the end so I know I'm at the very last stage. Um, I want to get like a, a warm tan color. So this color is important here. It's kind of like warm brown. I probably want a sort of uh, gray. Let's just Let's just look at this image for a second. Got kind of like a reddish brown in here. So so these decisions are actually really important to figuring out how this is going to translate. 
And so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to land this kind of warm brown color, if I can. Looks good. And I'm also going to land a black. So I've got right now one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine colors. I think that's plenty. Now keep in mind, I've selected nine colors, but one of those colors is white. We're printing on white paper. And so that color is kind of a freebie. I have to tell Photoshop to think about white in order for it to draw the right dots, but I don't actually have to print white. So that's a, that's a bonus. So now we're going to go into indexing the colors. So that's under image mode. Oh, sorry. Image mode. Index color. And automatically it's plugging in a previous uh, index color because I've been playing around with this. So what we want is a custom color. If we tell it like uh, another one of these settings, we can actually program it with the number of colors we want. So this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm going to tell it nine colors because we're including that white. And you can see that it's trying. It's trying to do it on its own and figure out what those important colors are. But it really does not understand the transition between the ocean and the sky there. It's really dropped the ball on that one. But as far as the texture of the bush, I'm getting some good results. But I'm going to go ahead and go in with the custom, and I'm going to tell it exactly which colors we think we want. So the way I like to do this is I like to click down the row. So we've got the black one, that's to start out with. So I'm going to go ahead and I could just click, using my eyedropper here, on those swatches as I go down the row. So let's... And I like to do them in the order that they appear on my swatches so I can keep track of having clicked all of them. Now, let's see. And, and it's possible that I won't like how this result renders. I don't like how that result renders. So let's go back into the custom mode here. One thing I can do is I can simply add another color. So the color that I've started out with, it, part of the problem here is that I may need more than one shade of blue to get this transition to work a little bit better. Um, let's look at if I add an actual bright white and see how that changes it. Did nothing. <laughs> So let's undo that. I actually need an additional color here because this hard edge is really important. It actually I need a, a soft transition here. So I can't just have bright sky and blue water. I need to have a middle color. So when I go into index color, I need to actually Knowing that, I need to kind of place a color that's something like this in order to create a transition. Wow. <laughs> so um, this is kind of uh, running us up against the limitations of how this indexing color is going to work. So looking at what I've got right now and realizing the limitation of the index color, I'm actually going to make a totally different change. I'm actually going to delete this color. Let's go ahead and delete that color. Let's, let's keep the hard edge. Sure, why not? And what we're going to do here is that even though this looks like a really hard edge, no one told us we had to screen print it like on hard edge. And this will give us an opportunity to talk about um, printing and planning out a gradient layer in our image. So we'll actually control the softness of this blue with the ink on the screen, and we won't rely on Photoshop to do it for us. So let's just say OK. And people can spend a lot of time playing around with these colors and getting results that they like, results that they don't like. Um, you have to decide which colors you think are the most important and then you can see and like feed in different colors and see how Photoshop renders them. So now that I've got it indexed, 
um, don't just let's just forget about this sort of ugly horizon because I can really easily fix that because it's such a straight edge. I'm going to just save that for later, and that will be kind of an interesting problem for us to talk about. So next up, I want to actually break down these colors into separate layers. So what I want to do now is I want to take it out of index color mode, and I want to throw it back in RGB color mode. So now I have an indexed image that's going to act like an RB RGB um, image for us. So the first thing I want to do is I want to open up layers tab here and I'm going to go ahead and make some layers. Um, and it's a good idea to name your layers, so I'll call this one blue. I like to name them with the colors of the image so we can look at our swatch palette, we can look at our layer palette, can we both have them both open at the same time? Thank you Photoshop. Um, so we've got a blue, we've got a purple. Come on now. Let's just do blue and purple first. So what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to use the um, select color range. And what's really great about this is I can bring the fuzziness down to zero and I can so I can basically select a single color because if the fuzziness is zero, it's only going to select that one color, and I have only one shade of blue, so it did actually a really good job. So what I want to do is I want to select, now that I've selected, I'm going to copy it, control C, I'm going to go over to the blue layer, and I'm going to paste it, control V. So now I can turn off my background layer, and I can see that my blue layer copied. So I'm going to do this now for all of my layers. Make sure you're making your selection on the background layer. So I'm going to go ahead and select my purple layer. We can zoom in a little bit so I can land that purple. So select color range. And this is my color, purple. Very good. Huh. I guess there's like a little purple edge on some of these things. That's fine. So I'm going to copy that. And I'm going to paste it on the purple layer. So we can turn off the... There's definitely some interesting artifacts there in the purple, but that is what the purple looks like. Purple is playing a little bit tricky, but this will work. Apparently I really need that purple shade, you know? This is one of those images where, um, because I want this purple color to exist as purple, that's important to me, um, I may have made my life a little bit harder for myself, but that's okay. We're gonna keep rolling. So the next color up is, um, light green. So I'll create a new image. We'll call it light green. I'm just going to keep doing this. Select color range. Oop. Because the fuzziness is zero. Wow, there's a lot of light green. Okay, so this is something that happened is because I was clicked on the wrong layer. So what I want to do is I want to make sure that I'm selected on the background layer and make sure I'm making those selections from the background layer. So select color range, this color, wait, this color, copy that, and lay it down on the light green layer. We can start to see how these are building. I can turn off the background layer. We can see how we're building up this image in layers. You can also maybe anticipate some of the difficulties we're going to have printing it, but we'll get to that next. Um, so fast forward a little bit. Now I have all of my layers on their, all of my colors on each on their own layer. So I can toggle between them and kind of look at each of those colors independently of the other. And I could theoretically shoot each one of these to my screen as is right now, no questions asked. I could turn off everything except for my dark green and go ahead and send that to the, uh, send that to the printer. Now, sometimes people ask me about this checkerboard background. That just indicates to Photoshop that that layer is transparent. If you find that you're having trouble seeing what's happening on your image because the checkerboard's getting in the way, what you can do is you can create a new layer, and I like to call this layer paper, and I'll just put it at the bottom of my stack, name it paper, 
And then I could just take the uh, paint bucket tool, make sure you have the white selected, and you could just lay down. So this paper layer is just here underneath all of your transparent layers, giving you something to see those colors on. So I could shoot all of these to my screen back to back and get um, okay results, right? So I've got, but let's take a second to look at the greens together. I feel like the greens, it's the browns. The browns are really pulling this together. So, well, let's just look at the greens together. So, if you were to print this to your screen, instead of printing each shade of green independently, what you may want to do is actually to print the light green, followed by the dark green, followed by the shadow green, but to actually stack them. So, instead of printing light green, you actually combine all three of these together and call that your light green. And that way, um, when you go into register, you'll have an easier time of it. So like, if, if I look at the light green and the dark green here, the light green could go underneath all of these layers. Currently, if I misregister my dark green layer, what's going to happen is it's going to do this business, right? And I don't want that. I want actually a layer of light green underneath it all so that if it does misregister, I won't have to deal with these little pinholes showing. And so the way that I'm going to do this is I'm actually going to duplicate some of these layers. So I'll just go ahead and duplicate layer. So dark green copy. I'll call it shadow green copy. Uh, duplicate this layer. And I'm going to bring these guys up to my light green layer, and I'm just going to combine them. So I'm going to merge these layers. And now this merge layer is going to be light green. And in fact, I'm going to make this easier for you guys to visualize by painting it all light green. So this is a, and, I, and I, for in order to see how these are stacking, this one will have to exist at the bottom of the pile, right? So if I want to have light green and shadow green on top of it, I'm going to need to move it down so it's underneath them in my layers tab here. So I'm looking at light green. I'm going to go ahead and grab this light color. And what I like to do now is I like to do something called lock transparency. This means that anything that is transparent will stay transparent. So it means I can just paint over the colors without painting anything else. And you guys can't see what I'm doing because I have these little guys turned on. So what I'm doing here is I'm just painting over my combo color. So now when I lay shadow green on top of it and I lay dark green on top of that, I'm not going to have to worry about registration in the same way. I'll have this kind of like under color to, for those colors to sit on. And so if my, my dark green is a little misregistered, so let's go back to adjusting it. If, it, if I print it a little bit off, it's still showing something, but it's not showing the white. Um, so I can continue to resolve this problem by making another combo layer, right? So for my dark green, which is actually my medium green, it's my it's my shadow green that's the dark one. We'll call it let's call it medium green. Let's let's rename this so we don't get confused. Um, it's okay if this feels a little bit confusing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make copies of these two. So I'm going to say um, duplicate layer. I think it's up here. Come on now. Where is my duplicate layer? There it is. Duplicate layer. Very good. And I'm going to duplicate the shadow green layer. Duplicate layer. So you guys can see it. Light green is good. Light green is finished. So what I want to do is I want to make my medium green a combination of medium green and the shadow green. So medium green and shadow green. This is now going to be a combo layer. So we're going to merge these two layers. And I guess I didn't need to make a medium green copy, so I can just trash that. Um, so now my medium layer 
has both the shadow green and it. So I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing I did before, except this time I'm going to grab the medium color. I'm going to turn off everything else so you can see what I'm doing here. So I'm grab this middle color, and I'm just going to go ahead and paint this a single color. We just we're just talking about stacking here. This is oh. Make sure you click the lock transparency. This is really critical here. So when I go over here with this medium green color, now when I turn on the dark green, it's going to just sit on top of that green. I'm basically making like a topographic map of these colors. So now if I accidentally misregister my medium green, it's really not the end of the world, right? I don't see those little white lines and little white speckles appear. So this is just something that's going to make your life a lot easier. Um, I definitely have a lot of like energy and like craziness over on this side of the image, but where, where you have colors that are like obviously in the same colorway, like light green, medium green, and dark green, going ahead and combining your light colors and then laying the darker colors on top of those light colors is going to give you your best results. So let's look at some of these other colors we've got going on here. So we've got our purple, we've got our blue. So I'm going to turn off the green so we can just look at purple and blue here for a second. And so now that I'm, I'm looking at it, I really get a sense that purple is existing down here, blue is existing up here, and I really want this to be a gradient because I want to have the white, the blue transition into white nothing. And since I'm going to make the blue a gradient layer anyway, I could actually combine the purple and blue and do a total gradient with the ink from purple to blue to white. And so if that's how I want to do it, that can save me one color because the purple doesn't have a lot going on here. And it might be better off just to combine it with the blue. So I'll, I'll combine these two layers now. So let's just give that a try here. So merge layers. And I'm going to go ahead and color it a single color. So now that I've combined it into a single color, for the sake of visibility, I'm going to go ahead and just paint it all a single color so you guys can see what I'm talking about. So I'm grabbing my uh, paintbrush tool, I've locked the transparency, and I'm just going to paint it all one color. I wasn't wild about that weird purple edge that it was doing on those top of the image. The next thing I want to do, actually, this is where things get a little bit more painterly is I'm actually going to paint this top level. I'm going to shrink down my brush and I'm just going to I'm going to unlock the transparency and let's just let's just go let's go go in here. You know, if 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 the index color is not giving you what you want, please feel free to go in yourself and get yourself the results that you want. Photoshop is not the boss of you. Um, when you're doing these, I find that you want to make sure that the hardness is fully up. We really want crisp edges for what we're doing in Photoshop. So I'm just going to go ahead and paint this out real quick. And you guys can see what I'm talking about. Hopefully you guys can see what I'm talking about. I'm just, I'm not really holding back on this one. This is, this is the, the fully advanced, um, Keep in mind that if this is this this like combining layers is feeling really complicated to you, you can also just simply print the layers as is. Just know that it's going to mean that the registration has to be dead on. And I know some of you can land those registration points dead on, but do think about where there are moments when you can combine layers to make your life easier for you. You will not regret taking that taking that time to make those choices. So this looks good to me. So what I want to do here is I actually want, instead of it being a, um, a flat color, I'm thinking about how it's going to shoot to the screen. So real quick, let's look at what happens when I lay a gradient layer. This is just me kind of showing you what it could look like with ink. So I've got the gradient tool and I'm just going to just show you what I can do with that gradient tool. Oh wait. I'm going to lock the transparency, then I'm going to do a little gradient tool here. And you can see that that actually is doing what I want it to do up in that area, right? So instead of trying to pixelate out the ocean, I'm just going to, I'm just going to manipulate that with the ink and that'll be really easy for me to do. 
And so the plan here is I'm going to go white ink, printing white ink, transitioning to blue, transitioning to purple. And the grayscale isn't letting me do a third color easily, but I think you guys can visualize why I combined these three colors together, right? So I think that this, I'm going to call this one now um, sky and plus purple. Sky to flower. So I've already reduced the number of colors that I'm printing, and I can start to look at some of these other colors. So um, if you're feeling if you're feeling complicated, you could also do the same thing we did with the other colors, combining your black, your tan, your brown. Um, if you decide to do that, maybe the way to do it is to just make the tan layer a base color underneath the black and the brown, and then just stack the black and the brown on top of it. So I'm going to go ahead and try that. I'm going to duplicate the black. So I'm going to duplicate. Oh, no, wait. No, no, no. Duplicate layer. And I'm going to duplicate the brown layer. So what I really want here is I want tan to be underneath the black and the brown. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on brown copy, tan, and black copy, and I'm going to merge those layers. So now I have tan combo layer, and tan now has tan now has a lot more of that information. Um, so what I want to do here is I want to go ahead and lock the transparency. I'm going to turn off the other colors so you can see what I'm doing here. The tan combo actually has all of the black, all of the tan, all of the gray. And so I want it to just be tan underneath there. So I'm going to go ahead and grab the tan with my eyedropper tool. And I'm going to go ahead and paint that in tan. Ooh, that's fine. Big brush. So this then goes underneath the black and the brown layer. So the sequence here does matter. And then the black and the brown would then layer on top of the tan. And this would just give you a little bit more room for correction as we're doing in these kind of fiddly layers, right? Um, or these would be ones that you would maybe choose to print each one independently. And you're okay with a little bit of um, uncertainty there. But I'm still printing the same number of colors. I'm just saying the tan combines the tan and the brown and the black, and then the, the, the brown goes on top of the tan, right? And so that means that if the tan, the brown prints a little bit off, it won't be white paper shining through. It'll be this weird tan business. Um, it might be good to do the same thing with the brown, just like we did with the greens, because I feel like the brown, black, and the tan are, again, a color way that could be stacked like this. And that's going to give us more um, thickness of ink as we build up those colors. So that is how we index those colors. Oh, last thing. Now you've got your separations, you've got your colors. What the last thing you want to do is you want to think about the sequence that you're going to print them in, right? So um, if, you're, if it matters what order that you're printing them in, um, print the sort of light from light to dark and those big under colors first. I don't want to print light green on top of medium green. I actually want to print light green first, followed by medium green, followed by this shadow green. And then I'll probably follow it up with this detail layer stuff. Okay? Um, the sky layer doesn't overlap or intersect with any of the other colors, so it can print in any sequence. Same with the black, brown, and tan layers. They're kind of like in their own territory. So you want to think about it. I need to print the tan combo before I print brown and black, but I, and, and, but I could print brown and black in any order as is. The last thing that people want to know is, if we're ready to shoot this to a screen, how am I going to do that? So what I would like to recommend to you is we're going to use uh, the same transparency tool. I'm going to turn off all the colors. So say we're printing this white gradient color. And while I'm doing a lot of fancy things with the gradient, I actually want it to be all black in order for me to shoot it to my screen. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and grab black. There's many ways to do this, but this works for me. And I made sure the transparency is locked. Now that black is selected, I've got the brush. And I can just color the whole thing black. 
because that little trick with the gradient is something I'm going to achieve with the ink and not something I'm going to achieve with the separation. So I can do that and then I can turn it off. I can send, I can actually send it to the printer right now. So I could go ahead and go to file print and I could go ahead and send this, this individual file to the printer. Make sure it fits on the paper that you're sending it to, all that good stuff. Um, if you're shooting this to a screen printing, you need something that is a transparency paper that can run through whether it's an inkjet printer or a laser jet printer without melting or damaging your printer. So just keep in mind that whatever transparency you're using is appropriate for your printer. Then I could go ahead and send a print it, and I could print that, but my printer isn't set up at home, so I'm not going to do that. Um, and in my opinion, I really like seeing the colors, and I like knowing which ones I send to the printer. So after I've turned it black and sent it to the printer, I'll actually go back because I want to keep it in the color because I, I like to keep the file in color to sort of help me think about uh, my colors and what colors I was thinking about when I made that, the, that image. So then I'll go to the next one and I'll do the same thing. So select the green layer. I've got the black. The transparency is locked. I can color this black. And keep in mind, this is the light green layer that goes underneath all of those other colors. I can send this to the printer. So one at a time, I can send each of these layers to the printer. And I can kind of, but I can also keep them in color here and kind of play around with them and see how I like how the colors are building. If I want to play with more gradients like I did on the sky layer, I could actually continue to do that, right? So if I decided that uh, maybe the light green layer was looking a little bit flat, and I wanted to play around with that, I can start to think about this. These are tricks that I would have to achieve using the ink, right? But no one's stopping me from kind of, um, let's see, kind of doing what I'd like. Wait. And say, say this, this, say this color kind of goes a little darker, just a little subtle gradient. You see what it does. You know, that was, that was maybe too subtle. <laughs> um, but you can start to build up a little bit more depth if you feel like the colors are starting to look flat, right? So um, you don't have to print the colors as flat as they come. You can start to think about um, how you are going to play around with those colors with the ink. you know. And so Photoshop is kind of a great tool in that way in that it lets you sort of see in advance you know, how you want to build up those colors to create something that maybe looks a little bit more natural. So um, have fun. And at this point, what you want to do is you want to save your file. Go to File, Save As. Don't save over that original copy because something could have gone wrong. So I'm going to call this Hillside, but I'm going to keep it as a Photoshop document. This is really important because the Photoshop document will preserve all of these layers and will allow me to go back and make changes to them. This is really critical here. So I'm going to keep it as Hillside as a Photoshop document, save it. And now I have both the original photograph, Hillside 120, and now I have Hillside Photoshop document 120. And so if I don't like anything about how my halftones landed, I can go back and change the one. But if I want to make other different changes, I can go back to the original file that's already res resolved at the right resolution. So that is indexing colors for screen printing. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you so much.